come through, queen. I want to see you come through, queen. Hi, everyone. It's Dan. And Brendan. And this is Come Through, Queen. Hi, Brendan. Hello, Daniel. Okay. What? Uh, so... I- you know, people are like saying this is akin to Scandaval, and I don't think it's going to have the same cultural ramifications at all. But Carl calling off the engagement and wedding with Lindsay Hubbard is like oh. is is like close to Scandaval Heights for us because we are very invested in Summer House. Well. I'm devastated, and I actually care about these two people more than I care about uh, mm. Ariana and Tom. Of course, so, of course. So yeah, I'm crying. So you're crying in the club or whatever. And you're crying in the club. Uh, you know, the buzz was was growing uh, yesterday before we started recording, and all the accounts are like saying there's this rumor. There were TikToks mm-hmm. going on, and there were TikToks going. There on. were TikToks going on, and then finally, Entertainment Tonight. Uh, revealed this morning that the Summer House couple has called off their engagement and it was all caught on camera. So Carl Radke and Lizzie Hubbard have called off their engagement. The two were set to get married in November, but Carl told Lindsay he couldn't move forward with the wedding. The breakup was filmed and will most likely play out on the next season of Summer House. Multiple sources tell E.T. Uh, mm. E.T. has reached out to Bravo, Lindsay, and Carl uh, but did not going to comment. And then page six, of course, has been pumping out the articles. They love to pump. Since this dropped. Uh, the most recent of which is a status on Lindsay. So as what the Roni girls taught us, mm-hmm. you got to ask, who does this article serve? Yeah. Right? So this is what this page six article says. Lindsay Hubbard is reportedly not coping well after her Summer House co-star turned fiancé, Carl Radke, ended their engagement. The publicist was blindsided by Radke's decision and is, is completely devastated, a source told Us Weekly Thursday. It's also raw. The dust hasn't settled with it yet, the source continued, adding that the salesman, Carl Radke, was mean enough to call off the wedding on camera. The source argued a normal person who loves someone wouldn't break up with someone they love on camera. No matter how many problems you may have, you don't do something like that on camera for the world to see their reaction. Right. Which is actually interesting. Because if you recall, like there, there was instances last year where Carl did not want to do things on camera. And Lindsay was like, no, like, yeah, like, don't cover the camera. Like this, they that. returned back to the house. Yes. and Like did the all camera stuff. Uh, uh, to be honest with you, mm. if I, me and you would break up. I would break up with you on camera. <laughs> <laughs> wow. 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 Okay. So there's a lot to this that we need to kind of pull apart. Number one, famously summer house would film through Labor, Labor Day, Day weekend. Yeah. Lo and behold, Labor Day weekend. They were not filming this year. They had wrapped the previous weekend. What, do we know that for a fact? We're not to Labor Day yet. Uh, I, th- it, that is coming up in the, a lot of the reporting slash the rumors. Okay. I don't believe page six at all turns mm. is the thing. Cause okay. they have also done reporting on just stuff I've tweeted. Like there are, <laughs> there are literal articles written about like okay. things I've tweeted. So like, let's not believe pa- page six at every turn, but okay. Well, well I think that might've been, um, I, I, well, I don't know. Entertainment Tonight said it was caught on camera, but whatever. Okay. Okay. So, I guess we could discuss our feelings generally about this. Devastated. Devastated. <laughs> no, I I really like. If there's two people that mm-hmm. I love in the reality TV space, I think Carl and Lindsay. Yeah, are I, at the top of the list. I think though that it was not the right fit. For either one, you know, I agree. I think she kind of ran into this post Stravi, and he kind of ran into this post sobriety. Yes, and I, 
it's hard for like us to talk about like what that is for like him of because course. like we don't really know but it did feel like really quick and whatever well especially with the portion of like obviously i think so much of their issues probably have to do with like how they interact with her back to drinking and how she behaves when she is drinking. Yeah. And especially like her being in the house and like wanting to be accepted by the other people Mm -hmm. and like all that kind of stuff, you know? So I, I mean, the wedding was months away and like to, to call it off, take some balls. Yeah. But like, it's probably ultimately the right decision because it's better to do it now than to do it after you're married. Sure. To me, it feels, and I hate to like say this, but it like, to me, it feels like we're all getting towards a certain age and like things are becoming, becoming a reality for like all of us. And like, they are around our ages. They're between me and you ages, even though now that you've, now I'm pretending to be 40, even mm. though I'm not 40 yet. But um, I, I mean, Kyle is older than me. Yes, exactly. But Kyle's not in the picture here. Oh, okay. But it's like with, with Lindsay and stuff, it's like she is getting older. And like that, there's a lot of realities that come with that. She oh, wants to have a yeah. family and all that kind of stuff. And that, that makes me sad. Oh, yeah. Her not like her having to like start back at square one. Sure. Like kind of brings me sadness. Oh, yeah. I mean, we already saw the timeline that existed with Stravi that she said she had moved on from and was fine with, Mm -hmm. but like she's also started her own fertility journey because she had yeah like, I don't know if she, I I think she did have an egg retrieval that was not on camera maybe, but like had the consultation on camera because I think she was posting about it on her like uh, Instagram or something. Yeah. It's just like tough stuff. Yeah. Kind of thing. And it's like, I want her to be happy. I want both of them to be happy. He'll be better off without, but it's like, I don't know. I mean, I think, I think she'll be better off without as well. Sure. Like, obviously there's a part of her that like wants to be able to do certain things without like feeling bad about yeah. herself, which like she can live her life the way she wants to. You yeah. Know? And I am interested to see this entire season. I was already interested to see this entire season because it seems like she's back in with mm. the bedwetters and like the other girls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so like, I, I'm so interested to see like how the friendships grow. And I'm so, I'm so happy that she's like back with Danielle. Mm. Yeah. Cause you got to remember like the reunion is probably only a few months before filming started. Yeah. And like things were not great then, but then they all went out to dinner together and then like Carl report, reported that to exactly. Andy. And then we also have like, we have to get through a full fucking season of winter mm. house before we even get back to summer house. So winter house, the, pr- the past two years, the past two seasons of it, um, premiered in October. So that's gotta be around the corner. And we're getting, Schwartz in Winter House? We are getting Schwartz in Winter House. Brian from Family Karma. Very excited to hear that. And then who else? Uh, below Deck people who I'm not familiar with. Danielle. A couple Below Deck people. I feel like we need to challenge ourselves to what? get into some sort of Below get Deck things. Get out of here. Uh, a lot of the news in the Bravo world is Below Deck adjacent i know we like adjacently covered it <laughs> yes exactly but i mean like hello no but you gotta like i i always say you gotta follow your passion like i don't want to i don't want to like cover it if i'm not into it you know okay but we'll get into it but like i did get into blow deck during covid and it was good I, yeah okay. yeah might have been the the like the quarantine <laughs> getting to your head okay uh anything else about this no no okay uh i'm excited to see how this plays out but sad for them of course yeah and we teased this a little bit in the pre-show amongst 
a conversation about so many other things. Brendan's journey to the U.S. Open. Oh, no. Two days to the U.S. I, Open. I've gone on too many journeys but this a, week. But a journey back to City Winery, which you may remember did not turn out so well last time Brendan was there. Here's the thing. I survived. You survived. I survived. Okay. So you went to City Winery this week for Sonia Morgan. Yes. So I went with our friend Tall Pale and... <clears throat> I made the smart choice to say, hey, we're not eating mm. at City Winery. We're going to dinner before. Yeah. I mean, so I, I mean, I guess I hoped that like the food situation at in DC would not carry over to New York, but sadly it does carry it carried, over. Yeah. And uh, can you speak to the difference in when we saw Candace, we were in the loft. Okay, you were so in the main stage. We were in the main stage. So before we went to the main stage, we got a little dinner in Chelsea Market. Smart. And then we walked <laughs> over and we were in like the main area, which is like a big room. Yeah. So I did not feel claustrophobic. Part of the reason I left Candace was because I like felt actually claustrophobic. Yeah. I did not feel claustrophobic at, <laughs> claustrophobic at all. Okay. Um, it was great. So I... Before we get to the content of the show, I'm angry as like a patron of the arts that Candace was in the smaller room, the loft, and no offense to Sonia, but a little bit of offense, like you're on the main stage in a room like twice as big. And the thing is, Candace brought a show. Uh, like an actual talent filled entertaining show. And Sonia, love her, brought a Q and A. <laughs> and I mean, like, love a Q and A. Okay, so a question from this audience. Yes. How was the show built? Like, is it just like come see Sonia, or was there any sort of like? So I kind of went in blind, unfortunately. Mm. And I assume so. We had seen Sonia, me and you, yeah, years not years ago, but like two years ago. Mm. We had seen like her test show at the UCB theater. Yep. And so I assumed it was going to be set up like that. So the show we saw was basically like a comedian. It was Zach Zimmerman, a drag queen, and Sonia doing stuff. Well, I mean, the first two things you mentioned were like kind of intermissions. Like it wasn't like Sonia was even interacting with them. Yeah. But then like she had like two like sketch comedy people doing stuff with her. There was like fan audience, like interaction coming up on stage, yeah. like pretending to be like auditioning to be interns, if you remember. Yes, yes. There was like games. Yeah, and there stuff were like games that. and all kinds of stuff. This was Q and A. <laughs> Q and A and the person who was questioning yeah. was somebody who used to be my neighbor and I hooked up with once in two thousand nine. But we won't get into that. But okay. it was very it was literally just Q and A the entire time. Okay, and then it was revealed at the show that this person doing the queuing was asked to do it the, the morning that, of the morning of. Yes. So Sonia was selling tickets <laughs> to this event without a plan up until the day of. Yes. <laughs> Here's the thing: the show was interesting. <laughs> So did she say anything about like ultimate girls trip that's coming up or crappy lake? She did say that like she is close with Kelly, which is surprising given mm. when we saw them on scary Island and she was the one like kind of defending Kelly back in the mm. day. Yeah. So it's moment. interesting to see, like it'll be interesting to see where they end up. Okay. But also like she, I mean, to be honest, not the best person to watch on a show, like, on stage. Okay. Just because, like, she's not really with it. Okay. And, like, you know that. Like, w when we saw her, wasn't the best. Yeah. Which, yeah. which is interesting because she had um, two shows that night. And you were at the first one. I was at the first show. So I can only imagine how the second one was going. Yeah, but she wasn't as... So, like, when we saw her back in the day, like, a few years ago, she wasn't on the level that she was back then. Okay. She was better. She was better. Okay. Yeah. Great. Uh, shall we get to 
And before like the Summer House stuff broke, this was kind of like the news of the week. Yeah. Atlanta reboot. <sighs> so it's so confusing. So it came first from Love B. Scott, which I think like some people when they saw that were like, oh, like, does this mean something? It's coming from Love B. Scott. But you got to yeah. remember that like Love B. Scott actually would get Roa like premiere exclusives and trailers and stuff. They're a reliable source. Yeah. So a reliable source, especially for the content of Atlanta. Yeah. Um, so Lubby Scott reported that like, there's going to be a major shakeup. The girls were told ahead of the reunion taping, like something's going to happen. Um, it wasn't like fully explicit that it's going to be a full cast reboot at that point. Mm -hmm. And then this is where like things kind of like diverged from there. We have like some sources saying that, okay, now we have some news outlets saying like, it is going to be essentially a Rony reboot situation. Right. Then we have some news sources saying, no, they're going to keep like, they're going to keep Sheree, Candy, and Kenya. Right. Which. The three most paid. Probably the three highest paid. And which goes against like the reporting that's happening of these women are getting like very high paychecks for declining ratings, mm -hmm. which I think some of the reporting was talking about how on Roni, like the paychecks of like the whole cast equate to like one woman on Atlanta. Okay. Yeah. Like someone on Roni is getting like for the whole season, what they're getting per episode. Sure. Yes. Yeah. Um, what is your, if you could do like a dream casting mm. or no, no, you don't want to do a dream no. casting. Well, cause like, my dream is I think like, like how much I'm loving Roni reboot. I would feel like, I'm ready for a Roa reboot. Yeah, but there's like something special with the Atlanta women that like, I don't want to throw them all away. Yeah. I mean, we're going to get into it when we talk about the finale. And I think the finale was kind of a good episode, but I, it doesn't solve the problem of like what I'm sure the network is not wanting to do of like pay these women so much money yeah. for like diminishing returns. My big thing, I think candy kind of has to be the one who goes, unfortunately. Yeah. Which we already know that, uh, candy and the gang was renewed for another season. Yeah. Like it's coming back. So like, she should really go like, the Lisa Vanderpump route and try to like make that happen. Yeah. The only thing it's like, it's not, happening. it's not Vanderpump rules. So yeah. it's not happening. It's not happening. But I mean, like it's to me, like I love candy. Like I think she's so important as a figure, but like on this show, she doesn't want to be here. Yeah. So she should then instead be on candy and the gang where yeah. like she's, being paid as a producer, which like ju will justify the amount she's being paid. Cause like you have a different role as a yeah. producer than like a cast member. Yeah. Should we jump into Atlanta just because sure. Why not? We're already talking about it. Yeah. Sheree to me also, it's like, there's so much story there, but she's not, putting it on camera mm. like the the bob and the other <laughs> daughter thing could have been like a fucking three episode arc yeah it just like it's wild to me she's not good at producing herself yeah she yeah. doesn't know i she, she doesn't know <laughs> she doesn't know got nothing in her brain yeah uh i'm gonna repeat dr jackie is main cast yes uh back again as as a main cast member should be <laughs> Uh, this time with Marlo and and Sonia. Thankfully, we have no children in the room. Yeah. And it kind of like sounded like she was like starting to get bad news 
yeah. at this appointment. But like Dr. Jackie didn't want to like fully go into it. The fuck the fucking husband needs to get in the room. I'm sorry. Mm. It was good for Marlo to be there, but it's like the husband needs to be there. Mm. Um also it's like maybe we should start just like really crossing over marriage medicine and Atlanta mm. at this point. Cause if Dr. Jackie's here all the time <laughs> <laughs> Like slowly like everyone from Married to Medicine becomes main cast of Atlanta. And I mean, it would make sense because Phaedra's on mm. Married. Oh my God. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, we got Drew and Ralph in the home arguing about him sleeping in the other room because she, she's getting home late. She gets home at like 3 a.m. or something like that. Yeah. From from filming The Pass, which I'm going to get into because I, I was seated this week. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but we'll we'll save that to like the end of this. Okay. Okay. He's a baby. I'm sorry. So, although I gotta say, like he's normally a piece of shit, but like the way she wanted him to go to war over this like Courtney bitch thing is like the actual video is not that big of a deal. Yeah. I think saying like this bitch is like it's not it's not the same as being like you are a bitch. Like yeah. Like, it's just throwing it around very casually. Um, we get a quick moment of Ta- Tammy Roman in the archive because, like, she has them on retainer. Apparently. Yes. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Did you watch the no L A Homecoming? And now I can't. I know because they took them all off. Fair I watched plus. part of it. Yeah. I mean, Tammy obviously was the star, but like, no reason watching it aside from her. Mm. Okay. We have more marriage counseling between Drew and Ralph. And we're getting like texts from Jojo about like, why is he sleeping in the thing and blah, blah, blah. And then like, she's making a big thing of it. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, I feel like this, I don't even know like why they're bothering doing this. Yeah. Also like this entire episode, like, when we get the reveal later, it's mm. like, I cannot believe we did not spend half the season oh. on like the reveal. Okay. Yeah. Uh, why don't we just quickly do the, the past party before we get to like picking things up? Mm-hmm. Okay. So the past party, Cynthia is main cast. Cynthia Bailey. It's like, whenever I see her nowadays, I'm like, I just need her to be main cast everywhere. I want her to be main cast on Atlanta. I want her to be main cast on Beverly Hills. Okay. Question from the audience. Yes. Now we know where she's going to pop up on Beverly Hills. Will she get a confessional on Beverly Hills? (sighs) To my knowledge, it felt like she filmed more for Beverly Hills than she did for Atlanta. So I'm hoping. I'm hoping. Okay, Okay. She's like best friends with Sutton. Okay. So then, yeah, because remember Cynthia X Sutton for the Sutton Collection. Yeah, and she's a chump too. Uh, oh no! Not no, that. don't bring that up. Then that gets into like the. Okay, so, so the fans and like this is actually goes back to reboot stuff with like Kenya has been on like this like campaign that started with Carlos King, and now she's talking about like my Kenya more hair care spa stuff was cut. Mm-hmm. And then I think in this episode, there was like a moment from Sonia that was cut and a moment from like Kenya that was cut that were, that were shown in like in the trailers. Yeah. And I don't even know if it was like a trailer for this episode or mid season trailer, but cut. So like, how did we go from a few weeks ago or a week ago to like including the scene? And now like we're having Cynthia, Interacting with Mama Joyce, asking for to see the ring, which was like really funny. That's so funny. I mean, we've we've we're getting like drips and drops of Mama Joyce. Like Mama Joyce could save the show. Really. Exactly. I mean, like rem- fucking remember her walking down that hallway. <laughs> yes, in her detective <laughs> gear. Uh, but it's just funny that like we're getting a Cynthia confessional and dramatic scenes from main cast being cut from the finale. It's wild. Okay. We've got a lot of Drew's sister this episode. Mm-hmm. There was a fight with Ralph in the home. And then, like, 
a near blowout with Courtney that yeah. like Drew came over to intervene on. Yeah. We got Drew and her lover like taking a shot with her backstage. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Ty has like posted stuff that <laughs> is like feeding into. No, I think like almost like anti Drew. Oh, okay. Since I don't know. Also, like it, this show is so weird right now because it's like Courtney is such a big part of the show, but like mm-hmm. not main cast. Yeah. So it's like so random. Yeah. Even like Moneta, like yeah, not main cast, but like has such big things to do with the show in a lot of ways. Okay. Yeah. There, there was like a page six article today about Moneta, and like. <laughs> I know. You live on page six. Well, I, well, I was like refreshing furiously for <laughs> Summer House. Okay. Uh, and there was like, Manetta Shaw says how like her relationship with Neo ended because like he wanted too many threesomes. Oh. <laughs> but like to me, like the funny part was like the too, too many. many. <laughs> how many threesomes is too much for you? <laughs> it's just too many. It's too many. Uh, I'm like drowning in three songs. Uh, I need more. I need more. Okay. Uh, a, a, a friendly reminder: Ralph turning forty in this episode. A peer. <laughs> Dan loves age. I love a peer. I mean, as as a forty year old, as a forty year old, Brendan, as a four, I, I, me, a forty year old. Yeah, that yeah. feels right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, whatever. Like, there's the trailer, a performance from Drew. And th- so this is January 28th, the rap party. Flash forward to March 1st, cameras pick up. And it is the same day as Scandal. And it's the same day as Scandal. Yes. Nuts. And here's the thing about Bravo and, like, what they're doing. Mm. They could have made this to be, like, the other Scandal, but they didn't. So, yeah. Like... It is actually not to quote Heather McDonald, but it is that juicy. It was juicier. So the fact that like I don't even know everyone filmed again. Like I don't think I saw a Candy, a Kenya. Yeah. We only saw Sheree, Marlo, Sonia, Drew picking up filming. Yeah. Um and to be honest, the Sonia picking up filming was more content heavy yeah. than anything else. Yeah. Because it talked about how she ended up having the, the miscarriage. And then we got the update, like, you know, they delayed her where is she now update that she is now pregnant. Mm-hmm. And we see that she's far along during yeah. the reunion. Um, but like hers was the only thing that was like actually content heavy. And I guess the difference between this and Scandaval is this has a divorce and the courts involved. Yeah. So they're like hampered by what they can say. Yeah. So then we need to really be relying more on the Courtney's of the world to like <laughs> tell us what's going on. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I'm really surprised that Ralph is showing up to the reunion actually. Oh, why is that? I just like, I wouldn't expect it. I would, I thought he would like cut his losses and leave. Uh, I mean, I think he wants to make his case Mm -hmm. And like, I think in the, in the, I think he's like making a case. Cause like the thing is we all know he's not a great dude, but like there is like a very strange narrative going on with Drew. I know. Remember like those like five minutes of television where we got to believe that he was the hottest man who had ever been on Bravo <laughs> before were... we realized he sucked. <laughs> there were five minutes. There were like literally five minutes of television. I think we were like, were we at Lake Bailey? I think we we're at Lake Bailey. Mm, yeah. Okay, okay. okay. So the, the affair with Ty going public while Drew is in the chair that's like the one thing they lucked out on. Yeah. If they didn't have that, we would really have like barely anything. Yeah. I mean, Drew is the star. There is... The camera likes Drew. I'm going to give her that. I like Drew. <laughs> when I look at her, I'm like, oh, I like that. I like that. Okay. So I was seated for the pass 
now available. Oh yeah, tell me. On Peacock. I probably should have watched like last night, but I was like, I was on the way to the US you at, Open. You were at Sony, you were at the US <laughs> Open. We can't keep track of you these days. Okay, so The Pass on Peacock released the night of the finale. The day of. You could actually like watch that morning. Which is... I don't know how they got that deal done, but like brilliant. So, okay, here's the thing about okay. the pass. It actually like is mirroring what is going on with like Drew and Ralph to a degree. Because we've seen the reunion trailer and this is a, kind of a spoiler, unfortunately, but like it's this isn't like... Uh, like an Oscar contender. Film. I'll never, I'll never watch. I'll, I'll probably never watch. watch like red, white and Royal blue when I get <laughs> okay. home or okay. whatever. So like, here's the, here's the gag. Okay. You obviously you, you already know the concept of the past. Cause like Todd was talking about it in the pitch for the, sh- for the movie mm-hmm. of like this couple. And they have like a 24 hour pass to like hook up with someone, but it's our like, greatest writer. Yeah. <laughs> you just made that up. <laughs> uh, uh, like you could hook up with someone, no strings attached, but like can't be anything serious, can't be with friends, can't be in the home, like all these different rules, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so like, so Drew agrees with uh, the husband to this pass. And what happens is, is like the husband doesn't actually even take it up on the opportunity, but then she has a work trip and she ends up hooking up with her boss. Ty? No. So oh. Ty is apparently friends with um, the woman that Drew hooks up with in the movie. Oh. Yeah, yeah, okay. So Drew hooks up with this woman, but then who happens to be her boss. That's fucked up. Not only, it's not only fucked up. This woman, like, does what Candy was accused of by Phaedra, like, drugs the drink. So like Drew's dancing with some guy and then ends up in a bed in like a very like Candy's bed. What? Isn't it in, Candy's in, bed? In Candy's <laughs> bed. <laughs> like wait, hooking that, up with the boss. That's so it, it was like really like disturbing to watch. Um I don't think we're getting the E got anytime soon. <laughs> but wait, hold on. There's more. So 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 she like that happens, but then like they start kind of hooking up more and like she doesn't want to, but she wants to, and she's doing it and like breaking all the rules of the past. Oh, and then she ends up getting served divorce papers by the husband. Okay. Now the gag is drew is very rich in this, like comes from family money, like has a trust fund. So the gag is the husband, the boss who is the husband's close friend and then, like, all their their circle of friends, I guess, were not in Drew's life before, like, she got together with this man seven years prior. Okay. And they all came together as a con to get Drew's money. Like, to, like, catch her in this thing and then have him divorce her. And then they're, like, going to split the money. Wait, this makes no <laughs> sense. <laughs> They meet in like a garage and Candy's like, we got it. <laughs> it's like the craziest thing. I will never watch this film, but. <laughs> so, so the tie, the tie to, to the real life situation is the fact that like in the reunion clip, they're showing how like they're claiming infidelity on the other, on the part of the other one, mm-hmm. I guess, in tr- you know, if there is some sort of prenup there to like be on the better receiving end of what how it's going to shake out sure so so it's like that's mirroring the movie in terms of like we're like we're cheating on each other and then using that to like get the other person's money crazy Uh, while i like can't strong strongly recommend the past as a film a it's like interesting in the canon of the show sure which is why i think it makes sense for peacock to have taken it on. Yes. Nothing you said to me made me want to watch mm. that movie, but I believe yeah. you in like the connection. Yeah. Your eyes were, your eyes were going this way and that I way. Know, I was like, <laughs> like, why am I so, I was like, why am I so listening? To oh that? my God. Well, 
Okay. Shall we get to Roni? Yes. Now, here's the problem with Roni. If, like, airing on Sunday, it feels like a lifetime ago when we recorded. And it's tough because it's, like, what I want to talk about the most. Yes. So, back in the day, Mm -hmm. for the girls who know, Roni used to be a... Back in 2010, mm. it was a Thursday night show. Mm. Were we? Oh, okay. 2010. That was pre podcast. That was right? that was yeah. season three. Mm. But then it was like a Tuesday, Wednesday yeah, yeah, type yeah. of girl, and that's where we like Roni. Of course. Yeah. I mean, we like we built this podcast around Roni. Like, <laughs> like we premiered it with like a season premiere of Roni. It was Jules' season. It was Bethany's second season yeah. back. Yeah. 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 So the fact that we're like so distant from Roni as we're recording this is tough. But I feel close to them. I feel close. In, in a lot of ways. I feel close to them. Uh, Uba is still unwell, rolling around in bed. So like that one, that one quick little like few seconds in the beginning where like she's being filmed in the bedroom. It's like, is she acting here? She's acting. Right, 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 right. I mean like... The, I like our girls, mm. but this episode wasn't mm. maybe like the premiere episode, you know? Oh, I mean, this is like definitely um, like the tendon in your in your body that like that connects the joints. Like we're connecting from like one to the next. You know what I oh, mean? The tendon. Yes. The tendon. Yes. <laughs> Friends with Brendan. Famously. <laughs> it's the tendon Davis. <laughs> um, okay. Jenna at her casting call for her eyelashes because... They're going to Target. She's getting more promo than like any other housewife gets these days, which is interesting Mm -hmm. and kind of like proves Bethany wrong in a lot of ways. Oh, how does it prove her wrong? I I feel like the Bethany clause, the quote unquote Bethany clause doesn't exist anymore. And I think like Bravo's being like, there's no Bethany clause. We're giving Jenna like all this time. Well, 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 this actually ties into the Roa conversation. Because it's like, well, if you're going to bring on someone that has something to promote, you pay them less and then let them go hog wild without you trying to take a cut of their check. Oh, sure. You know? So you think like Jenna's paying like 15K for like this ad sponsorship? No, or like no, 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 no. I'm saying Jenna's not. Jenna could have commanded like an Eileen Davidson season one paycheck, but she did not. She took a smaller paycheck and then said you gotta let me go hog wild on like promoting whatever the fuck i want to promote okay and you're not getting a cut of that okay do you don't you think that makes sense yeah i think maybe i think there's definitely like a deal in there but i don't think i don't think jenna's taking an eileen davidson wait why is eileen the one because remember like when do you don't you remember when like eileen joined she was like a mil like she started at a million where yeah. like season one housewives don't start at a million yeah but we don't know like any reality of like if that's true but okay sure, I, i'm sorry, living i'm sorry. living uh, I'm, I'm not yes ending here <laughs> i'm not making that big of a deal <laughs> like you're like getting so defensive i'm just saying if we live in the reality that that is true and then jenna's making significantly less than like I'm liking my theory of like, so then she could just promote her eyelashes. Cause I can't imagine like she's signing on to this and saying, yeah, Bravo, here's 20% of my eyelash business. Yeah. You know, that's why I think like the Bethany clause isn't real. And I think, I think Jen is probably making a big chunk of change to be on this show. And I think she's put it in her contract to be able to promote her shit. Mm. Yeah. I, I don't think like the Bethany thing exists. Well, so not to be like a Bethany defender, but like Jenna Lyons is a name. Like other people are, are signing contracts that say like, if you are promote like, uh, Jessel is, is, is not, does not have the same negotiation power that Jenna Lyons does. And it's signing a contract that says like, whatever you're promoting, like we're going to get something out of this. No, something. exactly. Yeah. So I yeah. think like Jenna probably can bend the rules. If there are rule, if the Bethany thing does exist, Mm. Jenna's not going to fall within it. Yeah. Okay. So we have the Jenna, Jenna, Jenna Talia story as witnessed by Cy. Did your um, siblings ever call you something weird? No. 
Okay. And yours? There's like this thing where people in my family have called me Bubba. Oh yeah. I think that's been revealed on this podcast. Yeah. But it's like, I, when my nephew Wilder was born, the youngest, I was like, I don't really want to be Bubba anymore, but my other nephews, mm. Brick and Thatcher do call me Bubba. Oh, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> huh. So you, oh, but interesting that you have rejected Bubba, but, um, Peach Larm for the show still calls you Uncle Bubba. Well, yeah. I mean, so like, he's grandfathered in. He's grandfathered in, yes. We love P. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I want to like touch down on, and like I hate to be like her, her like defender, but like people are really annoyed with Aaron online and Abe as well in terms of their reaction to the other girl's behavior at the event. Okay. So they're saying like, oh, Abe was laughing at Bryn. And it's like that, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry if like you don't know how human interactions go, but like- It's called yes and. You're at your like, your anniversary party event. Like, is he going to start like yelling at her and throwing her out? Like, he's just going to like laugh and like, ha like that's funny. Like, yeah. And just play along. Yeah. And I, I think I agree with you, but I want to hear your mm. defense of Aaron, just like for shit. Oh, well, I mean, that's part one of the defense. Yeah. And then like, I mean, every, like the side thing of like her leaving, like throwing a fit about the food. And like, she's saying like everyone else seems like satisfied, like with the food. And I need more evidence behind the fact that like Aaron quote unquote, doesn't have food at her events because like, it was like a big event. Like she must've had stuff yeah right? i yeah i, I mean uh, uh not to go back to like the hamptons but like they were upset about the potato chip thing but like that was meant as just like an, an in between we're having fun like mm -hmm. it doesn't even matter if you eat or don't eat this like we're going out to dinner and she said herself that like you could actually go in the fridge and see if like there's <laughs> a ton of other food yeah, yeah. yeah. so like I, okay but at the same time, I'm not faulting Bryn for what she did or or uh, Sai for what she did. But, like, I don't think Aaron is having a strange reaction that a normal person would have to maybe these things that other people are, like, doing as antics for the show. Yeah. I agree with you to an extent. I also think like she didn't see the actual interaction. Mm. And to me, the actual interaction with like Bryn and Abe was like kind of innocent, but like she didn't see it. So she's reacting to something she didn't see. But I agree with you. Well, and obviously Abe brings up the divorce comment, which she is going to harp on. Yeah. And Bryn does not even remember saying divorce, which we have evidence to the contrary. Yeah. She so, said it like three times. Yeah. 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 So, uh, fun fact though. This, Abe's hot. Oh. Well, we know you got the bone for Abe. I mean, <laughs> uh, many people do. Abe the babe, as Bryn says. <laughs> <laughs> Abe is like, he's like this like quintessential sleazy looking oh. <laughs> New York guy. Do you know what I mean though? Sure, sure, sure. Like we've all seen them at like a weird bar in the East Village. I guess he's just not blonde, so not doing it for me, right? Yeah, you only like blonde. Better yeah. on blonde. Blonde. <laughs> Okay. Uh, fun fact, this party was in December and they were married in June, but I'm going to count. I'm going to counter myself by saying we have a TV show to make. So sure, like, yeah. like if we celebrated 10 years this year, put it on camera. I don't yeah. give a fuck. <laughs> yeah. Know? Okay. Uh, Jessel and Povit, there should be like a Jessel and Povit requirement for every episode like at least one scene they're so fucking good like i love them so much yeah there's something about them there's something about them i mean like katie and ariana should open up another <laughs> restaurant called something about them that's jessalyn puppet themed yeah just um tequila martinis <laughs> and well although we are getting a classic espresso martini this time. yes i was waiting for her to like add tequila to i know that. yeah, yeah. Um, we're talking about two verse three when it comes to the kids. Mm. We are, she wants to like secretly have a child, another girl without really consulting him. And he's like done. 
Well, I don't think it's going to be a secret, but theoretically it could be a secret because like that child will be coming from an embryo and not yeah. from his peach. I think two children is good. So as somebody who never plans to have children. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, 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 I would imagine though, like to go from twins to even consider more must be like a big thing to take on. Yeah. Also like the thing about twins, I was one of my best friends growing up was a twin. Oh. So like the dynamics of that is interesting. Was it an identical twin or a fraternal twin? Fraternal. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's not as crazy. Yeah. But he was gay. His twin wasn't. Okay. Oh, his, uh, isn't it funny? Closest friends. His name was Daniel also. Oh, wow. I never told you that. Wow. Huh. Shout out Dan. (laughs) Dan the twin. (laughs) And then she's stressed out to talk to the mom about the years long IVF journey that she has not told her about. I thought that was pretty wild to not like if, what did you think? I, I want to take her at face value, but like, it's kind of like shocking to me in terms of, I'm sure like culturally she's probably being pressured to have children. Yeah. She at this point is over 40 years old. So like she must have had the kid like the kids like right around 40. So like it's just shocking that the conversation did not happen. And yeah. then the fact that the mom took it so well and she seems like someone who would take it well. Mm-hmm. I guess you never know how your parents are gonna respond like react to something, but like it seemed like she she was like, yeah, I would have like flown out there to like help you or whatever. Well, yeah. And I think the like Jessel's point, I guess, was that her mom internalizes like all that kind of mm-hmm. stuff too much, which is nice of her to think of. But yes. like, sure, sure, sure. For me, I'm somebody who like talks too much and tells people too much constantly. Mm-hmm. So like that would be the first thing I'm out. <laughs> if I was on IVF or whatever, yeah, yeah. I'd be like, I, I would have told you like, four days ago, you know? <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, but like, I don't know. Yeah. I, Jessel is the star. Yeah. She's the, she's cent- the girl. She's center apple. Yeah. Um, I don't, I'm like starting to think about couches, but I want to wait till trip. Yeah. Because there's like more to come. There's more to come. And there's like the, upcoming Aaron Psy Alliance, which mm. will be interesting. I know. It's like, at this point, I, I'm only like believing that because you're telling me that that is a thing. Well, I saw it on the TV. I know, but like something about being a parrot, but like, I wonder like, is that just like for a one, one and done scene or is that like a long term? There's also like Uba versus Aaron, then Uba versus Sai. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Brynn and Gideon, I'm like, oh, were you loving it? Oh, I was attracted to Gideon, obviously. (laughs) Is that bad? No, it's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's just like, there was something a little sad about it to me. It's like, why are we filming with this guy who you should actually, like, if you were smart, you could actually be with. Yeah. But it's like, there's clearly something about him or the relationship that like, you're not that into. Yeah. For you to like, have dated, broken up. He proposed to you. (laughs) You then called that off. It's like, we got to shit or get off the pot. I think that's a good lesson for all of us girls, though. If we have a... <laughs> if we have a, a girl lesson. If we have a fiancé, like, sitting around, or a former fiancé sitting around, maybe we should get on that pot. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. But it's interesting, like, we're, we have, like, like she's talking about kids here. Like we're doing that over in Atlanta. Yeah. It's like part of like summer house as well. Ooh, could never be me. A common, common. Keep the kids away. <laughs> Keep them away from you. <laughs> no, unless like, uh, I, I love uh, nephews and nieces. Mm, okay. Okay. Uh, let's wrap it up at the wreath making party. So 
So I, I think I want to have a wreath making party this oh, year. So you should host it at Window to the World. Oh, but Window is too small. I think you could host it at Window to the World. Even though I hosted a lot of people at Pride, oh, um, it is too small. No. Uh, so we're going to do a wreath making at Window to the World. Okay. And I hope you don't have brown avocado. Where is it? I hope you have some oatmeal. <sighs> <laughs> I hope you don't have only fried food. We're going to eat fried food for breakfast. I'm only giving fried food. It's like she... <sighs> sigh. Sigh. It's, she's trying. I think she... She is coming onto the show trying to be... A character. Like a character. Like, oh, I want to be like... Oh, I want to like do be quippy. But it's like not landing. I'm sorry. And it's... And it, and it's actually like the opposite of what Jessel is doing. It's like Jessel is just being herself. Jessel has no idea where she is, <laughs> <laughs> but that's why she's landing perfectly. Yeah. Whereas like Sai, it's like almost like a comment on like her uh, content creator, social media influencer. She's thing. too online. It's like you're tr- you're like trying to sh- to give us something. Yeah. Don't give us anything. Just be. Just be. Just, just no, be, don't just, just be. be. No, no. no. <laughs> you gotta just be. <laughs> okay. So I I tweeted about this. Not to like talk about my my tweets. Wait, what did you tweet? Um, I don't keep up with your tweets no, these I'm, days. I'm shadow. I'm shadow banned. <laughs> uh, the confessional that Aaron gave. I really sound like the fucking biggest Aaron stand. This, this <laughs> you episode. Are. It's really sick. Republican oh, coded. <laughs> <laughs> so in the confessional. When she's like talking about like, well, I want to go to the, this wreath making party because I want to ruin their event just like they ruined mine. Oh my and God. she and she the way she said it was like exactly like Teresa Giudice. Oh it yes, was yes, Giudician, one might say Giudician, yeah. Um, so I'm actually like loving her rolling in with like an axe to grind. Sure, yeah, you know, because like. I think we gotta like we gotta um, hit the ball back and forth. Like if someone does yeah, something, like pickleball. Oh, tennis! I saw tennis today. Every they every, hit the ball back and forth. Every action should have a reaction. Sure. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So she's giving it to Sai, and then she's giving it to to Bryn. We already talked about the Bryn stuff, so we don't need to harp on that. She storms out, calls the sister. Where do you think they were? I could I could not make sense of that, but Jamie. It Friend, felt like Jamie Chelsea. Miss, Jamie, Jamie missing to the show knew exactly where it was, so I'm going to assume it's Chelsea. Yeah, it felt like Chelsea. Uh, so it it kind of ends with the Jenna gift giving moment, which I was okay with. So I, I like to receive. An old saying: "Don't don't look a gift horse in the mouth." Yeah, and we got Bryn to some extent, but Sai to a bigger extent. Like making such a like a big deal over like all these gifts being like sponsored brand collab- collaborations and sponsorships and it's like okay give it back to her or give it away yeah like what do you want here's the thing like the good thing about like the holiday season is like if you get a gift mm. and you don't want it <laughs> you can regift it I think even just said like this bag would be great for regifting. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, Jess will never change. <laughs> I love her. No, like I, when I'm at my aunt's house in outside of Philly, like mm. she, when somebody comes over to her house, she's constantly looking for like another gift bag to re-gift something mm. so she can just hand it off. Yeah, yeah. It's like, it's, the holidays are about re-gifting. Hello. <laughs> that's, the, <laughs> that's what Jesus was born for. They're about Jesus and re-gifting. <laughs> I think that's pretty much it for New York this week. Good. Why don't we head on over to Orange County, which all this as well was a little bit of a in-between episode for me, but you seem to love it. I loved it. You loved it. Well, I watched it on the train from, from the US Open. The US Open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is a good place to watch a TV show, actually. Yeah. Uh, so, like, I love Heather, but the Dubros make me sick. Agree to disagree. Oh, okay, okay. So give your counterpoint. I love Heather and, and the bros make me want to kiss them. <laughs> <laughs> like the popping the champagne and the this. And Good. The, this is the third highest in the. Orange I mean, County. like, to be honest, 
Mm. Like, this is the money we need. Okay. I mean, like, we're looking for wealth on these shows, right? Aren't we? To an extent. Yeah, but it's like, it's it's so incongruent. Maybe that's the word in terms of like her and the rest of the cast. I know. That's what makes it so funny. Yeah. It's like her and then Gina's living in like a home that I could purchase. Mm -mm. You know? (laughs) Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) All right. So speaking of Gina, we got Gina... Going with Emily to Harley Davidson to like, we're going to learn how to ride motorcycles. This is classic fucking OC housewives. Mm. Like we're back in the day, we were on a Harley with Simon. Do you remember? Yeah. And we opened the season with Tamara on a motorcycle. So gross. No offense to anyone who does that. (laughs) I wonder like, what is like the Venn diagram of like, Come through Queen listeners and people who have ever even operated a motorcycle once. I'm not even saying like you are a motorcycle rider maybe i should be a motorcycle person or a vespa person you're you're like afraid to even be behind like a regular sedan (laughs) and you're gonna hop on a motorcycle i know uh jen and ryan going from workout to shower and talking about their the state of their relationship unfortunately i was attracted to that ryan person in this moment he he is attractive. I, unfortunately, like, I don't think he's famous enough for me to Google his age, but I'm curious, like, how old is this man to be in this yeah. good of shape? He's not blonde, though. Not blonde. <laughs> <laughs> That's one thing against him. I also, like, I'm not really into um, hairless nipples. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> you need, like, a little... I need a little hair up there. Need, like, like for wintertime. We're not in Orange County. We're in we're in we're Brooklyn, New York, New York. And, like, the winters get cold. Yeah. So you I, need, also, I haven't spent... Any moments in my new apartment in the winter, so I don't know how cold it gets. Oh my god! That big window. That big window is letting a yeah. lot of cool air in. Cold air, yeah. Cold, not even cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, we've got Disneyland paparazzi pictures, <laughs> which I'm glad. Like I remember this happening like in real time yeah and then like it ha- and then it, it's circling around two t's in a pod i mean obviously tamara and teddy have a point here yeah right but i do like heather was able to like spin it and be like eh, why are you being like such a whatever yeah. yeah yeah so it's like tamara made good points and bad points the bad points were okay heather like the last thing you did of relevance was in like the 1900s. And it's like, she's a real housewife, Tamara. Yeah. Stop it. Like, yeah. she gets pictures taken, taken of her. But then the good point was like, of this like tele- uh, uh, telescopic lens, sure, like professional yeah. photos, like that's where things go awry. And it's like, you do have to call people for to that get to happen. Papped these days or whatever. Yeah. The paps yeah. are not running around. Yeah. Rant. Especially in Anaheim yeah. or wherever <laughs> Disneyland is. Have you ever been to Disneyland? No. Only uh, the world. Oh, no land. I've been to Disneyland twice. Oh. Yeah. But world? Well, I've been to land twice and I've been to world multiple times. Oh, and you've been to ship. And I've been to cruise. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you've been Because home. my dad used to like try to buy my love yeah, 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 by yeah. bringing me on cruises. <laughs> and then he died. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got me out of here. <laughs> okay. So I'm actually like proud of Teddy for getting a Chiron. <laughs> Same. Like, hashtag proud of Teddy. Let's get this trending. That's what I was thinking when I was watching this right? episode. Hashtag proud of Teddy. <laughs> oh my God. Our, our minds. <laughs> our sick minds. Uh, between Teddy... And Taylor, who did not even overlap, the diamonds are taken over. It's three T's in a pod. <laughs> <It's> three. <laughs> so we got Taylor, friend of organizing, fall fall into the fall. I'm gonna host one of those at window too. Uh, I mean that's more of a doesn't Caroline normally do like a pumpkin? Thing? Sure, but it should be mine now. Okay, I did one. Oh, you weren't invited back in the day. <laughs> Yikes. Okay. Um, so I think the, the main thing, uh, other than paparazzi, which we already talked about, was Gina CPS. Yeah. 
<laughs> Shannon Bador. Storms. Shannon Storms Bador. I cannot believe. She's wild. Yeah. Not remembering. And then leaning into her non-memory. Well, I mean, she did have a good soldier in Tamara in terms of like, yes, ending the non-memory. But... Jen, we've got we've got the footage. Jen's right. Jen, <laughs> Je, is Jen my favorite housewife? <laughs> yeah, it's Jen and Jessel. <laughs> uh, no, I mean Jen is doing a phenomenal first season. Yeah, really. Yeah, great work there. Uh, no, but I mean, like Shannon. This is actually what makes Shannon a really good housewife is her leaning in. Mm. It's like. She's so delusional that she will lean into this moment, even though she's dead wrong. Rolling into the event with her like bruised up arm from a a vitamin transfusion. Fucking me. (laughs) Uh, Did we know prior to this episode that Shannon dropped out of law school? I don't think so. Yeah. If she had graduated mm. she would be our most powerful lawyer <laughs> like like ruth bader against <laughs> yeah she'd be on the supreme court wow. <laughs> i mean not ruth bader Ginsburg. <laughs> <laughs> her face would be in every t-shirt shop in p-town yeah. <laughs> uh ssb <laughs> Oh That's so sick. It's really sick. <laughs> there would be Shannon stands for another reason. Not yeah, because of OC. Me. Yeah. I'd be like on Boy Beach with a towel with her face <laughs> on it. <laughs> sick. Uh yeah. I mean, I'm I, I am glad that we do have uh Emily on retainer to like debunk <laughs> Gina's claims of like CPS taking the kids away. Uh, like CPS doesn't come like the next day. Mm. They wait a little bit, right? I don't know. I don't know anything about anything. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, I, that's OC. Is there anything else about OC you want to say? Just love it. Just love it. Okay. We have a freak of the week and the one true queen. Yeah. Uh, this week, <laughs> our freak of the week is one. Stop. One Brendan Davis. <laughs> one might call him Rip Van Winkle. Who? <laughs> Um, <laughs> I fell asleep. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, as we all know, Come Through Queen records on Thursday nights uh, in the the Lake Cursed home. Yeah, a hot meal waiting for you <laughs> every every Thursday, and uh, Alex and I are are looking at our 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 meal and thinking like, oh, where is Brendan? He's like over a half hour late. It was, it literally was only a half hour. Yeah. I mean, you usually come around 6.30 is the latest though. Sometimes you're earlier than 6.30. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm in early. I was at the... It's US Open. I US know. Open. And then I came home and I was like, oh, chilling. And then I fell asleep. I'm well, sorry. Well, but, no, but the thing was, was that Brennan texted at like a time at which like I would have assumed that he was en route. So I was like ready to like... Find him on the street. Like, is he in, in like a, in like a, uh, it's taken by EMS, like in an ambulance. I was ready to like storm the hospitals, but thankfully. Oh no. I just had fallen asleep on my couch. <laughs> <laughs> but then I arrived by like seven, seven twenty. Yeah. 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 Great. No, great to have you here. Glad we did not have to cancel this week's episode of course oh we would never cancel we would never oh my god uh yeah so what a what a beautiful her one true queen can the one true queen also be me no for showing up <laughs> we all appreciate you showing up each and every week um but our one true queen this week i would say someone who's showing up on salt lake city which <laughs> is premiering next week need you be reminded and that is one whitney wild rose and Alex in, Hurston drag. She's put in the wild and wild rose this week with, let me just play the clip. I would never assume that Meredith has a dirty house. I don't even know where you're living right now. I don't know what vacation rental you're staying in. I'd assume she'd wrap everything in plastic so that she gets her deposit back at the end of the lease. So 
this needs a little bit of explanation with like a visual cue because in the clip when she's talking about like she doesn't know where Meredith is Mm -hmm. they show four different exterior pictures of her rental homes for each season of Salt Lake City iconic has has Andy had this conversation at the reunion in terms of like you don't live here (laughs) or that's like breaking a fourth wall he doesn't want to break I think that's breaking the fourth that he does not want to break. Because, like, we Maybe. break. Maybe. We break. Because, like, we don't want to. I don't think it's, like, good for the show or any of the shows when because we acknowledge, she, like, a housewife does not actually reside in the city they're filming for. Right. And Meredith, like, mostly lives in New York, right? Well, cut to Erin Leachy 10 year anniversary. Yeah. She was ready, willing, and able to film then. And Brooks. And Brooks, of course. Remember when Brooks didn't know that he was reporting to, like, Italy for his first semester of college or something like that recently? No. Oh. I'll okay. pull you in. Pull yeah. me into that, yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, I'm not, like, full... Like, the Salt Lake City switch is not fully turned on yet. Sure, yeah. But now Whitney has, like, flipped the switch. Yeah, because Whitney is Alex in drag. And you <laughs> bet it all on blonde. <laughs> Like this is like one of the, like the most psychotic recent narratives of this podcast. It's not recent. You've always loved the blonde. <laughs> okay. I, uh, Kyle Cook. Hello. Kyle Cook. Hello. Wow. What a week. What a week. Uh, as usual, head on over to comethroughqueen.com for links to everything, links to Patreon. Uh, more on Brendan at US Open. He's actually been twice in two days. <laughs> Sort of. You'll have to listen. Sort to, of. You'll have to listen to Patreon to get the full story on that. Um, and like, comment, subscribe, heart share, retweet. You must love us. Please retweet. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. I wanna see you come through, Queen. <laughs>